Okay, here we go. Alright, that's better. Welcome friends. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the stream. My name is Eric. I am a writer, director, cinematographer, photographer, fight choreographer, and editor. Uh, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this, uh, this little look into my creative process and to the world of post-production. This is Aftercut, a stream and a series about post-processing and processing post. So, today we are, as the title says, working on a chainsaw fight scene, which is something I've been hyped up about for goddamn ever. Um, this is a uh, scene from Last Wave, The Curse of the Nicolas Cage Surfboard, which, uh, if you've been watching the, the editing streams, has kind of been the movie we've been working on for the most part lately, which is going to be, it's, and this is a scene that one of our, is one of our climactic scenes of the movie, so, uh, looking forward to, to sharing this little, this fun process with you. Um, yeah, the, that's, that's basically the plan for today. We're going to go, we're not going to do, I'm going to get straight into the fight, uh, and I'm going to, I've got, we'll talk about it once we get into the premiere, we'll talk about what we're going to do exactly. We're not going to do the whole fight today, we're going to just work, just work on some small bits. But, uh, that having been said, the, uh, the reason I do this stream and the reason I do this, uh, do this channel is, uh, kind of twofold. The first thing is that, uh, post-production and post-processing, whether we're doing film or photography, is a hugely, hugely, hugely influential and important part of the creative process. There's so much that goes into it, so many decisions that get made, so much can be reshaped in post. And it's really not very, talked about very often um, in terms of, yeah, just the amount, the amount of work that goes into it, the amount of decisions that get made, the amount of amazing people who work on these projects and who work in post. So, uh, yeah, we're going to... That's one of the reasons I do it, just to bring attention to that process and to share it. So if you are, if you're an editor and want to see kind of see my process and help it, you know, maybe defines yours. Maybe you can watch this and go, oh, that I'm doing so much better than that guy. He's an idiot. Totally good. Happy to be here for you. Um, but also, if you're a director, or if you're if you're a first time filmmaker, or if you're someone who has who wants to make movies or has made movies but has never really gotten into post and wants to know kind of what the process is, uh, I, this is this is mine, and I want to share that with you. Um, also, just uh, I've I've worked with a few directors, or I've come across a few directors. I feel like my mic is a little bit hot. Let's turn that down a bit. Um, I've worked with a few directors and and had interactions with a few directors who are and no shade to them. Most of them are are like not intentionally uh, dismissive, but are just new to the game or new to new to the new to the process of post. Um, who just don't know how much work goes into post. Uh, there was one director I I, I was communicating with about a project where they were gonna they had the movie they were gonna they had a week-long shoot scheduled and then he figured okay and then the next week we'll get it edited and it's just that's that's not how that's not the not the process and it's an innocent mistake but i want to be able to to help any director or any filmmaker or anybody in general who's curious about editing and wants to know what goes on in it uh to share this process with them so that all having been said uh this is as much of an open forum as i can make it i want you all to feel comfortable to share your work, share your stories, share your questions and comments, uh, anything in the chat. If, if you genuinely, and I say this all the time and I genuinely mean it, if you are an artist or a creator of any kind uh, and you want to share your work in either in chat or if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, share it on uh, in the comments, please do. I would love to see your work. I would love to, to, you know, I mean, for whatever it's worth, review and give you and give you my thoughts on your work, but also I'd love other people to see your work. So. That all having been said, as we jump in, please, I gotta say this, you know, like, subscribe, get get notified, stick with it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for joining there, and if you would like to to be part of the conversations, jump on over to Twitch, Checker Liar, uh, you know, Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash Checker Liar, or at Checker Liar, you can find me there, and uh, yeah, love to have you part of the conversation. Okay, intro done, let's get, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so we're in a premiere. So... Um, now this this one was interesting. I've already gone through and sorted the footage, uh, which is a which is a it's quote unquote assistant editor stuff. Just checking a thing here. Catch. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, so, like I've I've talked about that in previous in previous streams, and I will talk about it again. But this is I've already gone through and sorted the footage. So here's the footage we're working on with for this scene. It's gonna take a second to load because uh, there's a lot of stuff in this in this one file. There we go. 
So, uh, this is all the footage we're working with here. This is the whole scene. This is the whole scene as it has been sorted, separated, syn synced up the audio. We've got it all there. Uh, this is in my my workroom timeline. If you see over here, it's work. It's my workroom. It's where I basically keep everything for the whole film. I pull this back. You can see there's the everything I've worked on so far. Um, and you can see that there's a like going all the way back. A decent chunk of this is like you know you got a lot of shorter, you got some bigger scenes, but a lot of short scenes. And then you got this. This this scene is a beautiful monster. So I'm gonna come into here. Uh, gonna select my timeline. I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna go into my separate timeline specifically for the chainsaw fight. I'm gonna come out to yeah about six minutes out and paste. So now everything is here, uh, and I've also got I've got my workroom over here. So I still have all the raw footage if I need to come back to it and pull some new things. But also I've got the version I can work on in here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my audio uh, that I have, and I'm just going to take it and move it up, which will get rid of all my camera audio, most of it, except for the, some you know a couple of clips here that we didn't bother running sound on because like yeah, just a shot of the surfboard and the fire and stuff. So. Some of these things didn't need sound run on them, but everything else, uh, yep, everything else has been put together. Uh, so you've, uh, so you got all that. Let's see, what's this? This is a, oh, this is just a point of view shot that we might use. Okay, cool. Now, a couple things to talk about, talk about in the way I've organized this. First of all, this was an interesting thing to organize because you'll notice these are kind of broken off into, 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 into pairs. And that is because uh, we had two cameras rolling. We had two cameras rolling, and instead of kind of doing the usual thing where I'd layer them on top of each other, I decided to kind of split them and do it do it twice for a reason that'll become apparent in a second. So each of these little clips is we've got main cam and then B cam, um, and we will uh, we'll be you know cutting back and forth between them for each for the various moments of the scene. The other thing is you'll notice some of these are purple. And the reason for that is that main cam, which is the purple shots for most of this, were shot in slow motion. So we did, so if I take, you know, if I, like, so this clip here, which is the, which is B cam, if I play this a little bit, skip ahead a bit to the actual fight. So like that stuff, yeah, B cam, normal speed. If I come over here, you'll notice this is also like currently playing at normal speed. It's gonna be a loud one, a lot of yelling in this fight. So that's playing normal speed. But if I take, if I, if I was to drag this up above it and adjust, yeah, you, know, you can see it sped up 200%. If I take it to 100%, like the sound isn't gonna sync up. So let me just, uh, let me just mute and get rid of that for a second. But now we've got, we've got these moments in slow motion. Um, and so I have the, uh, I've got the whole, pretty much the whole fight scene in in slow mo as well. So for certain moments that I want to emphasize, I have the ability to do that. That is a uh, fun fact, a technique they used on uh, everything ever all at once. That that uh, majority of that movie was shot at uh, 120 frames per second and then sped up in post, which gives the editors means the editors can any moment in the movie that they want to slow down, they now have the ability to do, and it'll look great. And that is a a wonderful thing to have as an editor, especially editing action scenes. We have a peach punch today. Okay, which appropriate for a fight scene. All right, so let's go ahead and start and start talking about what we're going to actually edit today. Um, there's three sections, or there's I'm trying to think. There's four sections, five sections, five sections, five sections to this scene. There's the introduction, uh, which is our our setup for the fight and our like our dialogue. Before we get to the actual fight, we've got our you know yeah just our setup and everything. So that's the first. That's the first bit we've got. Second thing is our first bout. Ah, one of these is the. Yeah. Okay. That's the insert. Okay. Is our second thing is our first bout, which is what I want to try to get through today, or at least get started on. We've got our set. Our we've got our second bout. We've got our. We got our second bout. We've got our our ending here, um, and then we have our our complete finale, where we we finish out the scene. So, uh, and the the finale, I think, is only two. Is, I think it's only one shot and two takes because uh, it's just it's just walking away. But um, which is a shot that's absolutely going to be in slow motion. 
But uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and and start working on this. I'm gonna start with I'm gonna I'm gonna start by watching through these first clips, just because I just so I because I'm not starting with the edit. I'm start or not starting with the beginning of the scene. I'm starting with uh, the I'm gonna start with the first first part of the fight, just so I can start editing a fight. Um, and I'll come back to this at a at a later time. Uh, but for now, I want to. Uh, I want to I want to watch and know kind of what I'm leading up to, so I have an idea of kind of you know if I know what the first if I can kind of pick out what the last shot before the fight's going to be, I'll know what I can cut around to. So let's go ahead and watch some footage. These first couple shots are slow motion, so there's no sound. Uh, but and you'll also notice we've talked about this. I'm gonna real quick just remove those. Yeah, empty sound folders there, or file, you know, things there, because there is no sound. Uh, and then eventually we're going to see some feet come into this shot, one presumes. So assuming I'm not, I wasn't just testing the camera here. It's been known to happen. Oh, there we go, there's some feet. All right, let me save real quick. Uh, cool. And play. So here's our feet coming in. This is going to be... Uh, if you hadn't guessed from the title of this, this this uh, beginning is going to be a, is a is a reference to Face Off. Um, so, uh, so I'm looking for. Uh, so yeah, so we're so not our first shot, but our first kind of the the first time our our bad guy comes in, uh, our our bad guy who uh, named Trent Dushman. Uh, though he'll dispute that pronunciation. Uh, when he comes in, he's doing the whole John Travolta. We don't, they don't have the doves, but he's doing the whole John Travolta, you know, enters uh, enters for the beach fight in face-off. So here we go, coming in. Nice. And the third take, these all seem pretty much fine. Let me skip ahead to there. We go. Shadow coming in. Shadow's good. Also, as always, because we shot this at a bigger aspect ratio than we're actually editing it in. So if I go to here, if I go to this, if I pull this clip up, we've got more more space to work with. So when we're editing here, um, come back to this. I've got leeway to kind of crank this up a little bit and have a little bit less of the grass in there. I get a little bit a little bit of choice. I don't necessarily agree with this assessment, but uh, Steve Yedlin is a phenomenally talented cinematographer. He's Ryan Johnson's cinematographer, so Knives Out, Last Jedi, uh, I think going all the way back to Brick. I think he shot everything Ryan Johnson's ever done. Um, I think they were childhood friends. Okay, so those shots look good. Um, the uh, he's got like he, his his website is amazing and he's 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 a very very f like he's a very technical minded cinematographer when it comes to just the way he talks about uh you know putting a project together and um and he, like he's he's one of the cinematographers who is he's like for him it's much more of a technical process than it is an artistic job necessarily I'm not saying he's not an artist because he absolutely is but um there is a there's an interview with him where he talks about the job of the cinematographer is to provide as much possible data in the correct format to the editors so that they can make the make the artistic decisions. Um, and while I don't think that is, I'm not sure I'd list that as the number one job of a cinematographer. Uh, I think that a cinematographer who can give you a whole bunch of extra, like cinematographer who can give you. Um, you know, yeah. When you've got, you know, we're shooting in this aspect ratio, but having the extra space to move and to like, we're, you know, this this edit is in, uh, isn't uh, is a high def edit, but we shot in 4K, so that if I want to, I can, you know, crop this up, you know, a hundred percent and still have it be, like, clear and good quality. So that is, like, that's it's important to have that stuff. That's and again, same with the slow mo. Even not even if I don't use it, it's important to have it. Okay, I'm gonna let this clip start playing and we'll uh, take a look. Isn't this 
this religious. <laughs> the eternal struggle between good and evil, sinner and saint, surfer and sucker. Oh, you hurt me, Boogie. You're not having any fun, are you, Boogie? Hey, Shelby Lynn. Your friends with an S. Oh, how could you know with all the sacrifice and whatnot? Your buddy Gordo's not going to make it. Last I heard on the CB, the whereabouts were unknown. But we both know, Boogie, this curse is going to catch up to both of us. I mean it. This world is getting FedEx to hell in a handcart. I did the research, too. I, uh, I read my sister's witchcraft books and studied ancient spirits. I even read the Kelly Slater Blue Book cover to cover. Yeah, it's in the uh, the restroom at the D12 clubhouse. It actually makes a good bathroom read. It's about as useful as toilet paper. Ha! <laughs> Please! The stories, the codes, the maps. Boring! Yeah, all meaningless. Obviously, you can't hear it very well, but we're talking off screen because that's the other side of this. Well, time for plan B. Let's just kill each other. <laughs> so, any last words? How many takes did we do? We did a couple of takes. Okay, cool. You can't hear it, but he's, he, uh, Boogie's doing the Ghost Rider speech. Oh, deep. I like it. But you're still not having any fun. That's okay. So there's our, there's our, here's, and here's the other thing we like, uh, there's a lot that I can use in there. Um, and part of another thing real quick, talking about the way we shop this is, because this is, uh, yeah, we we shot this in February, so it is it is cold outside. You can you can see the the uh, uh, breath coming out of his mouth, which I think we're just gonna live with in the like on the world in the role that he's crazy. Um, but um, the uh, the thing is, like you know, he comes out comes out to here. Well, isn't this religious? And like, I don't love this framing right now, but if I adjust down to there and I bring this into, I don't know, 75. Yeah, let's take it up higher. Let's go to, let's go to 90. Come into 90. I can adjust this. I can adjust this a little bit. Now that's a much better framing. That works, that'll work a lot better for this moment. And we get the shadow back there and it's a little more, it's symmetrical, it works well. Um, and because we were shooting this, you know, in February and it's cold outside and he's in shorts and Boogie's in a tank top, um, it, it's helpful to not have to do too much close-up coverage. We can shoot this as, shoot as a wide and, like, know that anything that's wide can be turned into a medium, anything close-up, anything that's medium or close, close, if I take this to 100%, like, that's a, that's honestly even a little bit closer than I'd go for this, I'd probably, you know, I'd probably hang out like there. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've got options there and this allows us to a kind of, you know, run, run fewer camera setups and B we get to work. We get the, like, you can let the actors who are about to do this fight scene. We can let them, uh, warm up and or, you know, let them run through this stuff, uh, with fewer takes and fewer cuts and save their energy for the fight. All right, let me go ahead and cut. Cut the beginning of this. There you go. He's walking in, but I know I know the walk in is going to be the feet shot, so I can. I don't need to worry too much about that. Here we go. Let's cut off the ending. Fun. Cut. Fun. Cool. 
Real quick, a bit of advice for anyone shooting fight scenes. Um, because fight scenes, here's here's what happens on fight scenes. Hey, apart up like, and I'll talk about the safety on fight scenes forever in a in a in a bit, and I'm sure this is going to be a running theme throughout. But the thing, but thing to know about shooting fight scenes, going into them, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go in, you're going to rehearse, you're going to run the fight, you're going to go and be like, all right, we are ready to go. This is going to be great. We're going to shoot this fight scene. Um, whatever the, and you're going to get through the beginning. You're going to blow through the first half to two thirds of the fight. And you're going to be like, guys, we are ahead of schedule. This is great. And what's going to happen is all of a sudden the energy is going to drop. And if you're not prepared for it, it will slow you down. We were two hours ahead of schedule when we were shooting this. We took a small break. We came back out and we ended up wrapping an hour and a half later than we planned because that energy drop hit all of us. Um, the other thing to remember is, and this is sometimes a thing you can do beforehand, but it's often a thing you got to do at the end, um, is you got to remember there's going to be, there's, there's after the fight scene. There's going to be, the fight scene's going to end. There's going to be a couple of shots at least that are the cleanup, the, the aftermath, whether it's a drone shot or a, or a wide or just a close-up of someone reacting to what happened. Like that's, you're going to have to shoot that. And usually it has to happen after the fight because most fight scenes are going to have chaos and maybe blood and maybe whatever else scattered around that you can't do ahead of time. So just a thing to, to when you're planning a fight scene, be prepared you got to do the intro. You got to get through the fight itself, and you got to try to keep that energy up. And then don't forget you there's there's you got to do stuff. You can't just cut off at the end of the fight. You've got to have the aftermath. Uh, and that was a thing that a couple fight scenes I've done. This being one of them, we we ran into. Yeah. Cool. So let's wait for him to start moving. There he goes. Cut this. Delete that. I think this is just, I think this, I don't know if this is an outtake or just we just, we just only covered the beginning or had an issue, but here we go. Well, isn't this religious? <laughs> the eternal struggle. Hey, Stephanie. Between good and evil, sinner and saint, surfer and sucker. Okay. So, yeah, once he kind of, let's see. I crank this up to 580, which is the highest it'll go. Sinner and saint. Yeah, let's see. The eternal struggle. I think kind of at that point we can't use any any of the rest of this, but so I'm deleting it from here. Remember, it's all still in the workroom, so I've also I've still got all of it. But. Well, isn't this religious? Yep, that can all work. All right, here we go. Starts moving. Cut that off. Delete the delete the pre-roll. Back and here we go. Well, isn't this religious? <sighs> the old eternal struggle between good and evil. And here I can like I can tilt up and still get him. And I think I think that's exactly what I'm about to do. Surfer and sucker. Oh, you wound me, Brookie. You're not having any fun, are you, Brookie? Friends with an S. You didn't hear, did you? How could you? With all this sacrifice and whatnot. Of course, how could you? With all this sacrifice and whatnot. Turns out Goldie's not gonna make it. Mm. <laughs> uh, last I heard, on the CB, they're, uh, Whereabouts are unknown. But Boogie, we both know the curse is gonna catch up to our sisters one way or another. I mean it. This whole world is getting FedEx to hell in a handcart. I tried to do the research. I read my sister's witchcraft books, studied ancient spirits, even read the Kelly Slater Blue Book. Cover to cover. That was <laughs> hearing trains in the background. It's always always the problem with shooting some of these places. Shot D. 
I'm on a Dutch angle now. Yeah, okay, we okay with that? Okay. Coming in. Let's delete this. Well, isn't this religious? Struggle. I've got it. I've got the leeway now to, to crank up and get it and get give him the headroom he wants. Good versus evil, sinner versus saint, surfer versus sucker. Oh, you wound me, Boogie. I don't think you're having any fun, are you, Boogie? Friends. With an S. Okay. Um, friends. With an S. Oh, oh, you didn't hear because of the whole sacrifice and whatnot. I don't think we'll, I don't think Gordo's gonna make it. Oh. Last I heard in the CV, their whereabouts were unknown. But you know, just as well as I do, Boogie, that curse is going to catch up to them sooner or later. I mean it. I mean it. This whole world is getting FedEx to hell in the hand, Gordon. There you go. I tried to do the research. I, uh, I read, I read, uh, uh my sister's witchcraft books, and s studied ancient spirits. I even read the Kelly Slater blue book, cover to cover. Don't worry, Stephanie. There's gonna, we're going to be doing multiple streams about this one. Clubhouse. It's actually... <laughs> Kelly Slater Blue. Okay. Go, okay. Huh. It's in the, uh, the restroom at the D12 Clubhouse. It actually makes a good bathroom read. It's about as useful as toilet paper. There we go. This is a thing. Oh, this is a thing that I look for when I'm editing a scene. Thank you, Premier. Um, is it's not just about like what I'm looking like. Here's the thing: the there's a lot that I can do as an editor, and I think I always try to stress on these streams is that when um, is that the behind the scenes of every single movie, and this is one of the reasons editing doesn't get shown very often. Is I think I believe actually there's a. Um, like once you hit a certain budget level, SAG doesn't allow uh, behind the scenes footage or, or raw footage to be shown um, once you hit a certain budget and a certain level of prestige. Uh, so that's why I like working on independent stuff like this. But the the thing I look for in this, and like, yeah, he's 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 flubbing some lines a little bit and he's kinda, you know, like working out some of the de some of the, the deliveries. But the thing that I'm getting from him is that he's he's in character the whole time. And as long as between all the takes, I've got enough to, to cut together, like, I'm not worried about this. The, the little mistakes are easy for me to cover as long as his delivery sounds like he's in character. And as long as he's, as long as he's embodying the role, I can, I can fit, make the words totally work. Um, and this is exactly what I want. This guy, Keeks, is, is very, like, a wonderful, like, like, you know, uh, Struggles a bit with the memorization, but his line delivery is is excellent. That's enough for me to work with. Stories. And, and I don't want to stress, every movie has this. Like, if you if you could actually watch all the raw footage of... I mean, if you've seen outtakes of movies where people blow lines and stuff, like, those are the funny ones that everyone's agents have approved being released. Um, if you... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. If, you're, if you could see all the raw footage, you'd see, you'd see mistakes, you'd see flubs, and that's okay. Codes, the maps. Boring. All meaningless. And the job of an editor is to take all the best parts of all the takes and put it together. Also, a thing that I like that he's he's the ending of this so far sounds really good, and it's good. To, that makes me happy because I'm I'm on a Dutch angle now. I'm like the camera is a bit tilted, and I, hopefully, and I think I can do this with the way this is shot, um, is I can start off more straight on, 
and then go Dutch later on in the scene as we get more and more deranged and more and more into the actual fight. Ring. All meaningless. <laughs> that, this is why I'm watching the bits where, he, where Boogie's talking. I can't hear anything because these reactions from him are fun. <laughs> yeah, just, again, he's in character, which is beautiful. Plan B. Why don't we just kill each other? Yes. So, do you have any last words? <laughs> and this character's designed to be just weird and all the weird and all the best and most like sort of like if there was ever a character who's basically like you know you know, a, a hundred salamander influencers in a trench coat or in a green leather coat. That'd be this guy. Gee, I like him. But Boogie, you're still not having any fun! And that's... <laughs> you're still not having any fun! There we go. That's, that's what we'll use. Uh oh. You're still not having any fun! I might cut to cut to a shot of the chainsaw because I've got B-roll of the chainsaw revving up, um, and we'll talk about the chainsaws and and shooting inserts. Um, so we'll, yeah. Boogie, you're still not having any fun. Cut to rev the chainsaw, and we'll be good. Okay, cool. Here's the cage board, sort of watching what's going on, and this is most. This is gonna. This is. You'll notice the board is looking kind of off screen to the uh, to our right. That's gonna be there for when we're for like it's it's looking at boogie like we've got it kind of coming around here i think i think, I think do i do the full move or is this just no it's, I, I intentionally switched because my shadow's there but yeah i got a couple nice push-ins there on on the board all right and then we've got coverage here which is the whole scene You're still not having any fun. Okay. <laughs> this is the again. Is it this religious? And then what are you saying when you first get here? So. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. To boogie. Go. Isn't this religious? You got to back up. No. Okay. Eternal struggle. This religious. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start with that line. Probably not going to cut into this yet because I don't want to, you know, in, in, in the other take he walks up and I want to make sure he's got time to get there, but it's only. Boogie, you... Sinner and saint. Surfer and sucker. I just feel like they're a little bit, a little bit out of sync. Let me see if I can fix that. Move this all down. Take these clips and synchronize them. Let's see if I can see if it changes anything. Nope, they appear to be all totally synced up there. Okay, cool. Let's check this one. This one's good. Yep, okay, totally synced. Cool. Let's go ahead and put this back. Oh, not just that one. I gotta, let me link these. These should be linked up. There we go. No. They should be linked up. I'd like them to be linked up. Can we link them up? Hey, Premier, why aren't you linking my clips? There we go. Thank you, Premier. Nope, still don't do that. Okay, weird. Hmm, okay. See how this ends. You're still not having any fun. Cool, and that's how the start fight starts. Cool. So delete that. It's not the shot I'm going to start with. I don't think I'm going to start with the 
with the revving up of the chainsaw, but we'll get there. Delete all this. Make that gap. There we go. Well, isn't this religious? The eternal struggle. Do good and evil. Sinner and saint. Surfer and sucker. You're the sucker, douchebag. Oh, look at you wound me. You're not having any fun, are you, Boog? No, and I can adjust this. Everyone is dead. However, I want it to. My parents. My and again, this is shot at yeah, you know, shot here, so I can I can crank this in if I want to get. You didn't hear about that. How could you with the whole sacrifice, whatnot? Doesn't look like Gordo's gonna make it. Let's set it to just to ninety. So yeah, if I want to turn it into that frame, which is nice and balanced, I can do that. But also that wide is good because it's got the fire in the foreground, which is going to be important. But you know as well as I do that... Hey, Boogie! We're still not having any fun! God, God. I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to work on continuity there for figuring out when Boogie gets up. No, he gets he gets up during the speech. That's fine. Alright, so then we've got shots like this. Alright, let me take the cut out of here. We're still not having any fun! All right. Another thing I love about I think I love about working with with I mean both these actors, especially Keeks, is that he is, you know, when he finishes his lines, he he is he always and even even in pauses, he always has ways to like stay in character and like throw in creepy laughs and creepy facial expressions and weird movements and stuff, so that it's not like ah oh, finish my lines, gonna stop acting now. Like he's he's in it. Alright, shots, uh, F.1. Take one. <laughs> Somebody clap. Alright, so let's back this up, because some of that was good. Alright, shots, uh, F.1. Take one. Somebody clap. Like, that footage, it's all out of focus, but that's actually pretty, might be pretty useful, so I'm gonna keep that. Good, that works. Synced up. That shadow in the shot. Go ahead and take this part out. And again, like this shot can be like let's come back and get some get some more fire in there. There we go. That's a screenshot. That's actually pretty great. Um, let me quickly save that as a still. Do one of these. Uh, that's going to the wrong folder. So let's do a real quick. I'll come back. To, I'm just going to put it here. Uh, chainsaw one. Um, let's see if that's saved where I wanted it to. Give me two seconds here, guys, just to make sure that's where it, where it should be. Uh, yep, that looks pretty good. Cool, got it. And that is a. Yeah, we'll come back to. It. Okay, cool, sweet. Sorry, just wanted to check that. Uh, but anyway, the other thing, like I was saying, is that I can, again, I can take this up to 100% and make it, and give us that, which is not out of focus, just hazy. And that's kind of cool. Um, the other thing I can do is still obviously, obviously have room to, to push the fire up a little bit or to pull, pull, pull it down and let it be sort of, sort of find that balance. I actually really like how that looks, but we'll come back to it. All right. Violet. Lollygoth. Last I heard of CB, their whereabouts unknown. But let's face it, Boogie. It's only a matter of time until the curse catches up with both our sisters. I mean it, Boogie. This world is being fed up to hell on a handcart. You know, I did my research, too. Read my sister's wit witchcraft books, studied up the evil spirits, even read the Kelly Slater Blue Book, cover to cover. I'm talking for a quick second about, re about reaction shots. This moment, like... You know, uh, I'm watching him react to stuff, but I'm also getting the fire and him in the background. And there's a lot, like, I'm, I'm doing a decent amount with these shots. Um, 
And I can rearrange that. If I decide that I want to see the fire at a certain point, I can, you yeah, know, because he's not saying anything and he's not, you know, it's not matched up, I can you use this. The there we go. Yeah. For the dialogue, obviously, got to be, get, got to be in the right spot. It's a great bathroom and just as useful as toilet paper. Toilet paper? That book belongs in a surf museum. Oh, please, the story, the code, the map. Boring. Map? It's all meaningless. Wait, did you say map? You know, I tried. I'm sorry, You know, I tried to come up with a plan. A foolproof plan to capitalize on this whole cursed surfboard thing and what happens. The plan just blew up in my face. Oh well, plan B. Let's just kill each other. Any last words, Boogie? I'm going to own this curse, and I'm going to use it against you. And whenever innocent blood is spilled, it'll be my father's, mother's blood, brother's blood. And I'll be here, in a spirit of vengeance, fighting fire with fire. I'm going to take it back and just do the whole, that one, that would Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine with me. Give me one second. What the fuck is that? I'm going to use it against you whenever innocent blood gets stolen. I'm going to own this curse. And I'm going to use it against you. And whenever innocent blood is spilled, this is not the shot I'm using for this clip. And for this line. Brother's blood. This is B roll. You'll find me here. In a spirit of vengeance, fighting fire with fire. Good. All right. Cut him. Fighting fire with fire. Good. We'll put a cut there. So there's a lot of usable stuff in that. Let's do a quick. This is just B-roll, where you got the the board and the fire in the same shot. Just B-roll of the fire. Here's the rest of it. Frame. Action. The eternal struggle. This is our, yeah, this, this is our main shot on Boogie. You're the sucker, douchemen. You woo. Okay. Violet? Bolly got. Last I heard him, this curse is going to catch up to both of our sisters. Spirits, even the book. But it's about as useful as the stories, the codes, the... You know, I tried to come up with a plan. A foolproof smart plan to capitalize on this whole cursed surfboard thing and and what happens plan just blows up in my face yeah well you need a plan b and i got one why don't we just kill each other any last words looks at the board the board we get the so he gave us he just gave us an in to to see the board's reaction, which is amazing. I'm going to own this curse. I'm going to use you against it. Do that line again. Do it against you. Do you want me to just sit down this whole thing? Or? No, I want you to get up. Get up, get up. And frame. I'm going to own this curse. And I'm going to use it against you. And whenever innocent blood spills, it'll be my father's, mother's, brother's blood. And you'll find me here with a spirit of vengeance, fighting fire with fire. I like it. Deep. But you're still not having any fun! This is a really fun combination of cage lines. I'm actually really, really happy with this. Quiet on set. Here's our errantor where he gets up. Run, run it one more time. It's at the beginning. Action. Any last words? All right, and this is the yeah the speech when we're taking it. Jay, take Any last words, Boogie? Let's see. Action. Any last? Let's cut the beginning out of that. Not that I, I mean, actually, that's not a bad. I, I might keep that because I, I, I might be good with reactions. I'm going to own this curse. 
and I'm gonna use it against you. And whenever innocent blood spills, it'll be my father's, mother's, brother's blood. And you'll find me here with the spirit of vengeance fighting fire with fire. Good, still rolling one more time. Again, we're shooting this in February, so huge props to, to Joe pulling this off. One more time. Fighting fire with fire. Cool, can use that. Action. Any last word? Action. Let's take out the middle. Any last words, Boogie? I'm going to own this curse. And I'm going to use it against you. And whenever innocent blood spills. It'll be my father's, mother's, brother's blood. And you'll find me here in a spirit of vengeance, fighting fire with fire. Yeah, it's a deranged low angle. Really happy with that. Uh, and then we cut to Doucheman saying, deep, I like it. And that's, that, that actually worked pretty well because we we're, we're got this low, this low Dutch angle on him. And then we've got, we can cut back to this shot of Doucheman. Uh, that I, because I can zoom it in, I can take this to like, I take this to 85, can can bring it over here, can bring it over here to make it sort of match, and then I can also tilt it a little more to kind of give it a little bit of the same look. It's not quite the same thing, but it'll give it a bit of that, a bit of that same energy, uh, which will be awesome. Okay. So then, where's my, where's my chainsaw B-roll? Is it down here? It's down here. Okay. So... Still not having any fun. We'll have him, yeah, have the shot of him revving it up, which has no sound on it, but that's just fine. Uh, we'll have the shot of the chainsaw revving up here. A uh, couple shots of that happening throughout the throughout the course of the course of the film. Uh, we've got yeah shots of. So let's talk about inserts real quick. Um, and you'll notice in a couple of shots, Doucheman has the chainsaw going one way or the other. That's why we shot this in a couple different ways. We shot this once with it in, with it in his right hand, once with the blade going this way, and then the reverse uh, going the other direction. Going here, going the other direction, and then him revving it up from that way. So we've got options. But let's talk about chainsaws. Um, so editing a so when you're doing a fight scene, number one rule editing when you're making a fight scene. Number one rule is ever is safety is number one. Safety is 100% essential. And to, to shoot this scene, thank you, Premier, um, to shoot this scene, not only, obviously, we, like, we, had a, we had a fight choreographer, Devin Dean, whose fight choreography is still some of the best I've ever worked with. Um, you're going to see some of his great work in a second. Um, the, let's see, this starts with the boogie standing up. Cool. Um, is there a cut there for any reason? Now yeah, we'll come back to it. Anyway, so, yeah, so, we, so fight choreographer. Rehearsed fights, you never, you don't do a fight scene that's not planned out. Um, Second thing, you yeah, obviously you rehearse it and you run it and you run it and you run it, so the actors have it pretty, have it down cold. Um, third thing, no actually dangerous weapons on set ever. No action, like no no re, no real guns, no live ammo, nothing, no real weaponry on set. Um, in the case of the chainsaw fight, and this is the thing you're not going to notice in the wide shots or in the in the in the bits where they're fighting here. Um, is like. As they're going through that, there is no... We've taken the blades off... The chains are off the chainsaws. The chainsaws do not have chains on them. Um, so, there's like when they're actually swinging these things around, they're not... They're, there's not a blade on them. They're also not on. You'll, you'll, you'll notice. Like, and that's for a couple of reasons. One, again, safety. Uh, but two, uh, like we want to be able to hear them making noise. And adding the sound effects of the, uh, of the chainsaws in post is an easy thing to do. So, we're going to do that. Um, but yeah, so the chains are not on the chainsaws. Uh, we're fighting without that. And then for for these shots where we need the where we need to see, so then so what we do is at the beginning of the scene, we have the moment of you're still not having any fun, and we watch, you know, we watch a chainsaw with a chain on it rev up. We see that happen, and then when we go into this shot, uh, we cut to here, and you hear the sound of the chainsaw, and you see them going at each other, 
the assumption is you're gonna it's like oh well that's obviously it's you know it's the same chain so the assumptions the things on there in post i'm also going to be adding sparks to every time the chainsaws hit so there's going to be you know there's going to be moments you know to, to add to that illusion um but these guys are not fighting with chainsaws that are actually actually bladed uh during this fight which is hugely important to make sure everyone's protected okay let's work on the first bout careful guys frame action i think this first one we kind of whiffed on yep first hit board comes down frame action all right let's put a cut there and what we're gonna do is i'm gonna go through, i'm gonna start going through this fight and just picking out the parts that look good mostly just just pulling out cuts Honestly, that first swing looks pretty good. I, I'm, I, I want to establish how I'm going to end up doing these cuts, but like... Up to there, looks good. Alright, same deal. Let's delete that bit. Let's come back to here. All right. All right. We missed on that move. First take. They're taking their time with it. Other interesting thing about fight scenes is when you're doing a fight scene, um, and I'm gonna. Some of this is like I said, it's, it's slow motion. I might speed some of this up a little bit more just to give it that a little bit extra extra of that. The wide shots are always gonna look a little slower, which is kind of cool. Um, and the close-ups with the camera moving a little more feel a little more a little more intense, which is good. Um, but nothing about fight scenes is if you actually shot a fight scene at the speed that a real fight takes place, um, it would be incomprehensible. Uh, it, like there's a there's a practiced slowness and controlledness to doing movie and stage fighting. Okay, so maybe we can use some of that. There's moments in there. I'm, I'm basically sorting out what's, like, I'm, I'm going to start pulling, you know, popping clips up. This, this, one, this first one's actually not a bad early swing. I'm looking for, I'm looking for where, like, that duck needs to look real. And that's not too bad. That looks way too high. Uh, so we're going to reset. So here, here they, they're rehearsing a bit. There you go, good. Go tuck that back out of the, right next to the pot, yeah, right next to the, yeah, yeah no worries. Uh, it's not working. Still rolling, Ryan? Still rolling, Mike. All right. Yep. All right, and. Hold it, Eric. Action! Okay. So we can delete all this in the middle. First takes are always weird. All right, so that's the first bout. Cut, cut. That's our first. That's that is. Uh, I don't know how much that I'm gonna use. Cut, cut. Uh, but that is that's the that's the move that at least in this take that is the that is the movement of the first bout of this fight scene. <laughs> now let's watch this from uh, from the perspective of camera two. Riley, roll camera. Rolling. Mike. <laughs> So this push in. Uh. <laughs> so again, like, you know, and, and there's a thing to talk about with with framing and with angles with a fight scene, and that like, yeah, from the from the shot from the wide shot, I'm gonna try, I want to try to use the wide shot for that first swing if we've got one that looks really good, but like. 
from the perspective of, of like two people hitting each other, if you're on, if you can be on a bit of an angle like this, like you know, hand to hand, if you can be on a bit of a bit of an angle, um, there is like you, you distance becomes harder to tell. If you're side to side, you can tell the distance between these two things. But if you're here and like you know, I, my hand swings across, boom, and like reacts, and my other hand re you know, reacts that if I was to like backhand, uh, you kind of get that. I'm, I'm watching my little camera down there, um, but like. So, uh, you know, on an angle like this, this first swing looks like, yeah, we can, we, can, we can come through to there and put that cut. That actually looks pretty good in terms of Boogie getting around that, ducking around it. All right. Uh, okay, so we've already cleared that out. We're going to delete that bit, and we're going to keep going here. Uh, and uh, Riley uh, was operating operating B camera here, and she and basically she like for the most part she was just told capture close ups, kind of wherever you want to go with it. And like each time you do a close up, once you if you do a close up on Boogie, make the next one a close up on Doucheman, and just kind of give me as much footage as I can because we ran this fight multiple from multiple angles. Um, Riley capturing capturing B roll, but then you're capturing second cam, but me also doing wides and then coming in for over the shoulders. Definitely, definitely some of this we can use. Clear that out again. Same stuff for clearing. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> Coming on the board. I like it. There's moments that I can definitely use. It's like it's you know quick cuts that we can get away that we can use for a little bit little moments of the thing. And that's that's what we're gonna need. So cool. That looks good. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, all right. So here's a shot that's uh, a bit mostly an insert. Chainsaw insert. Take one. Action. Uh, let's cut this out. All right, you got part of that that we can, that'll work. And he turns around, and that'll be I can use that as a reason to cut. And there we go. Now I've got him turning the other direction, so I've got I've got two options depending on which which take of him I go with in the other uh, other side of the on the other yeah you know, the rest of the movie. Next. All right, and action. So now the other thing is this footage was shot at eight, shot in HD, so this footage is not 4K, so I can't zoom in too much more on this. But I do still have my top and bottom that I can go to to adjust framing. Good cut. Oh, that, looked, that that turnaround looked really good.
And that breath coming out. Before he turns back, because that's good. All right. Does this one continue at all? No, we stopped there. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let's look at the next one. Coming on down. Just slowly working our way through it. That's, that's how these first ones always go. All right. Cut off the beginning. There you go. Beginning of that's really good. I'm actually, I'm actually really happy. I'm actually really happy with how that beginning looks. That's pretty. That's that's. A, there's a lot we can use in there if I'm going to use the wides. Um, and again, 4K can zoom it in. Can can get some highlights. The other thing I know is when they do that lockup, I'm not going to use it from here. I'm going to let them let them kind of come together. But we have a shot. I don't know if, I don't know if it's where it is. I think it's here. Uh, no, it's not here. It's, we, we've got a shot somewhere where you where we see the we're looking at the board and we see the shadows of the chainsaws cross up, um, and so that is that's what we're gonna use for that mode. So I know there's certain beats where I'm like I know where this is gonna land, um, but this take is pretty good. Funnily enough, I find that I edit. I edit fight scenes the same way I edit interviews, where I will get, I'll have a master shot that kind of covers most of it, and then I will, I'll just, you know, drop in my inserts, my close-ups, kind of throughout. Uh, you gotta get that ending right. So we're gonna watch and see how this, how this dodge looks here. And the other thing, the other things, the good things, important things to have. My director has a monitor, so he's seeing how this looks. And the fight, and our fight choreographer Devin is also looking at it. The other thing is, um, uh, the other thing is that we. Another reason that fight scenes will take a lot longer than you think they will is we're we're watching playback. We we do a shot, and I'm like, and we're like, okay, we, did we get that? And we will we'll check, we'll go back, and we'll rewatch the clip. Um, in between takes and say, okay, does that look real? Do we need to do it again? Do we need to make an insert out of it? I was, you know, one of the things that Devin, our fight choreographer, obviously he choreographed the fight prior to shooting it, and then he's on set helping them with choreography, helping tweak things. If they're like, hey, this feels weird, he can tweak it. But the other thing is he's making notes for, oh, because like when you rehearse, you're not necessarily rehearsing in character. You're rehearsing, um, you know, you're rehearsing the, uh, just the movement. And it's fun because I'm watching that as a cinematographer I'm watching the rehearsal and going, okay, uh, that that moment in the fight seems like a good moment to t you know to, to have some to put some character into this moment in the fight. You know, we can do a shot that kind of expresses this in a certain way. Once I see what Devin has planned out, and then when, once we're shooting the fight, it switches so Devin can watch them in character and can say, ooh, that hit. Do that. Let's 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 focus on that because that's an in that's a moment that we can now now that I'm seeing the performance, that's a moment I can do something with. Uh. There we go. Focus on Dushman there. There we go. That moment looked good. That's also pretty good. Right, to the ending though, that's not so much, but the yeah, the beginning of that was was pretty. It's pretty usable. Okay. Cool. So the ending of that wasn't great, but the beginning, the be the first two thirds were excellent. So we're gonna keep that. Next clip. I apologize. Today's turned into kind of just a lot of watching, and then next time we're gonna really get into the editing of it. But again, the editing process is a very slow process, and if you if you try to rush through it, you're make you're, you're not gonna be thinking through your decisions. All right, shot M. Yeah. Okay. Action. Action. All right, that was good. That duck was pretty good. There 
There you go. That's looking good. Nice. Good. Push it down there. Not. There we go. There's that hit. And here's the thing. That hit right there. That's what him using the back of the chainsaw to clock Boogie in the face. Like from here, I'm not. I'm certainly not using this this angle for that hit. Uh. Okay. scream that's the other thing a uh, lot of water a lot of lemon uh, on set for fight scenes because you're making a lot of like guttural kind of noises uh, and it's gonna like you'll make sure you protect your vocal cords okay that looked phenomenal look at that and then again same thing we watch from here he looks like he's aiming high we watch it here that that looks excellent. I love that move. I know I'm going to cut before he gets the chainsaw, so I can go ahead and put a cut and bring this up, because that's an excellent clip. Riley, if you're watching, chef's kiss. Beautiful work. There we go. That third hit was good. Nice. Yep, that, fight, that, that push off is good. Excellent. That, that hit is actually pretty good, too. It's not... The reaction is pretty good. The, the hit itself is still, is still obviously not, a, not connecting, but that's fine because we have a, we have a shot to connect it. That, was pre that looked pretty good to me. Um, it also helps, again, think about the in-universe in version of this. Neither of these people are fighters. In-universe. Both of these people are... They're surfers. Uh, <laughs> Boogie has a... A low self-esteem that is probably should be higher, and Douchman has a high self-esteem that certainly should be lower. So the two of them can. Um, so both of them are kind of in in different ways out of their depth, which is funny for a movie about oceans and surfing. Uh, action. Okay, so we cut off, we trim off the pre-roll. <laughs> So you'll notice my, uh, you notice I've gone from wide, now I've gone handheld. Now I'm doing handheld uh, profile. And I'm moving with them a little more. Oh, this was the take where the chainsaw accidentally came on. Okay, good. And like that, so up till then that works, and then this becomes funny. <laughs> All right, so that becomes, <laughs> that gets taken out of here, uh, cut, and that goes into the outtakes reel. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go back to here, close that gap, same deal here. Cut off the pre-roll, close the gap. Ah, uh, he's good. Him kind of squaring up here before he realizes what's happening. That's pretty useful. The rest of this is outtakes. Actually, hang on, let me see if that's. There's some fun to be had there. We'll go ahead and take, put that into the outtakes reel for now as well. Paste. All right. So again, trimming this down. Next. Uh, I feel like making vibrating noises. Everything synced up. Action. Cut. Trim off free roll. Okay. Sorry. Alright, so we're gonna reset. That turn is good. I like that. that Put out the gap back to this back to 
That looks good. That's looking pretty good. Oh, that looks great. Good, good, good. <laughs> oh, that yell is excellent. Um, yeah, there's some good stuff in that one. Let's bring that. Let's bring that one up, up a level here. Let's watch it from Riley's view. All right, take two. Same deal. Cut this off. Check the beginning. All right, I know they don't. They kind of fudge up a little bit. From out the middle, back to here, back to the start. Again, that swing looks better from this angle. That yell looks great, and that ending, that first hit isn't isn't great, but the uh, the the second hit and the and the kick are pretty good. And that shadow, like if I push this in a little bit, that shot's good. Uh, and like we also have, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna show you some of the like the B roll we got down here, once we put the chains back on the chainsaws, um, we've got this shot here where. I jump ahead a bit. Oh, thank you, Premier. Um, eh, come on, Premier. There you go. We got this shot here where we are uh, dropping the chainsaw into shot. So when Boogie falls, we can watch the chainsaw drop into shot, and we've and it's, and it's got the chain on it. Reinforces what's going to happen. Or reinforces what's happening and that this re reinforces the reality of it but also um you know it's like all right i know when, once we get to the kick i can cut to that shot and that helps cover not only cover you know the moment to make sure that we're, we're including the important information because in a fight scene especially one that's chaotic and this isn't this isn't the most chaotic fight scene i've ever done or ever or ever seen but like it's a chaotic fight scene and so in a fight scene, it's easy to lose track of who's got what and who's standing where and so on. So that's where wide shots come in handy when you can use them. And that's also where inserts like that come in so we can say, okay, Boogie has lost his chainsaw. Sweet. Okay. Very good. All right. So another shot here. Okay. Which will be useful. Okay. And then after that. Okay. Hang on. Okay. Right, let's put a cut there. I think I'm still on. Okay. And then after that. Okay, swipe. Okay, very good. Okay. I'll put a cut there. Just so now I've got this footage of the fire, which is cool. All right, synced up. Break. Another thing we tell them is if you miss a if you miss a move, keep going because we can cover that. And Devin's are making notes like, okay, they kept missing that one. Let's do an insert of it to make sure we get it because that swing looked awesome. Like so, they missed they missed the connection there, but this dodge is excellent. The lockup's good. They keep getting that pretty well, doing a pretty good job with that. Okay, once they get in the middle of that yell, I can cut and we reset. And again, pro again, props to these two. This is February, as a reminder. February in Jersey. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, up up till there is pretty good. I like that moment. Um, then we're resetting again. All 
All right, let's delete that. So yeah, sometimes you know this is what we have Devin on set to work out some kinks. Okay, we talk through it. We talk through it. We work through it, and we do it again. Nice, good dodge. There they go. Nice. And my audio sinks a little bit off here. The hit. And then the kick. Yeah, there you go. Right, that cut, that definitely can work. Right, take that out. How many more shots do we have in this first bout? I think we're starting to get, yeah, we're coming in over the shoulders in a second. Doing a couple of those. Yeah. And there's the there's the hit. Is this the There's it. There's the chainsaw getting dropped that we're not using. Yeah, we did. We man, we did. We shot this a lot, which is important. Here's the other oh, yeah, here okay, here here's your shot of the the chainsaws locking up on the over the shot of the surfboard. Um So yeah. Uh I think I think this is where we're going to call it for today. Uh we've cut we've gone through most of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna know that we're gonna that we left off here. I'm gonna put a bit a little bit of a gap. Oh, don't wanna, don't wanna trim that. I just wanna put a bit of a bit of a gap. So I'm gonna come back to this spot. Let's go ahead and save. Um Yeah, and we're just gonna come back to uh Okay. If I, if I come back to just me, which should be this. Nope, there we go. That's the right button. I'll get it. Um so yeah. Whoa, hey. Thanks, Firefox. Didn't ask you to pop up, but okay. Down. Um, yeah, so, uh, with this said, welcome to uh, welcome to us editing a chainsaw fight. That's what we're going to be working on for the foreseeable future. Um, and uh, every, every week, I'm going to be doing two streams at least. Maybe a third one that we might start adding in the coming weeks. Uh, but this, we're doing two streams a week. One is going to be a photography stream uh, where we edit photos and talk about that process. And then one's going to be a film stream where we're editing uh, editing this. So, yeah, check back in to watch this to watch this fight scene come together and be part of the process of it coming from start to finish. Um, that having been said, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for being part of this. Um, if you would like to support me, support my channel, support the work that I'm doing, a you know like, subscribe, share, tell people about tell people about it. You can also go to erichackler.com where you can see the rest of my work. If you want, if you are a director or a filmmaker or uh, yeah, looking to, to collaborate, I would love to hear from you. We can. There's a contact form there. Uh, you can also reach out to me via you know, Instagram, whatever you want. But so yeah, talk. You know, get in touch with me there. Or if you're interested in my photography and you would like to to, to buy a print, uh, those are also available on my website. I've got prints. I've got postcards. I've got a whole bunch of different uh, different uh, shots. You know, from ranging from architectural photography to nature photography to wildlife to landscape sunset. Uh, and some more artistic stuff as well. So with all that said, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for being part of this, letting me share my the beginnings of my artistic process with you. And I know it's a slow, it's a slow burn. It's never, it never, ha it doesn't happen quickly. And these moments are always like fine tune, you know, get it all right. And I really, with a fight scene, you got to go through it and really with a, with a fine tooth comb. But it's going to look amazing when we're done. And I'm so glad to be able to share this with you. So with all that said, be safe, be well, keep telling stories, keep making art. And uh, yeah, check back in next time, and we'll uh, yeah, we'll have another, we'll have a blast, and we'll get uh, we'll we'll keep seeing Boogie and Douchman, uh, you know, duking it out in the for the glory of Nicolas Cage. All right. See ya.